Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining this webinar session on creating a digital marketing plan for MSME or micro and small medium enterprises. And of course, we initially organized this webinar or our primary audience for this webinar are the graduate students uh, taking up internet marketing at the uh, Ateneo Graduate School of Business in Rockwell, at Rockwell. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Bong. Uh, for this opportunity and of course to Pam Astillero for inviting us here and of course to all the students who are who joined us uh, tonight for this uh, webinar session and then I also would like to invite our patrons and our friends who took the time and effort to or to who made time uh, to join us tonight at first earlier I thought I'm not gonna make it no because uh, I wasn't expecting that the traffic from airport to our place is, will almost take uh, three hours no, this afternoon, but uh, fortunately we made it. No? So what I will do, uh, when, when the topic was first given to me, I had, I had to think about the approach on how to go about with this. Um, of course, there are many trends uh, changing uh, insofar as digital marketing is concerned. And the way we look at our market the way we identify our target market has also changed uh, through time because of the, I guess, the demographic changes as well. However, I noticed the moment we start going through the nitty gritty of digital marketing, a lot of things remain the same. So what seems to be happening is that um, a lot of the changes are happening more on how we look at our customers and how we try to understand them and our interpretation of their needs, what they want, influences us how we're going to execute our digital marketing campaign. So what I would like to do also is uh, to share what we're doing uh, insofar as working with micro and small medium enterprises, uh, mostly uh, sole proprietors uh, running their own business, mostly based from the provinces, and how to apply uh, e-commerce and digital marketing in their situation, okay? So for this session, uh, for those of you who have not uh, encountered me yet, my name is Janet Toral. I've been in the e-commerce industry since 1997. So I'm, I've been teaching uh, digital marketing and uh, e-commerce blogging and social media for quite some time now. And uh, I've also integrated other learnings that are not necessarily in digital, hopefully to provide a well-rounded approach so I can be more effective as well in uh, giving value to our students. Um, when I review myself or when people ask me what, what I'm passionate with, I consider myself to be passionate with e-commerce in educating the public and then at the same time uh, spreading uh, this knowledge to as many people as possible. So whenever I see opportunities to be able to do all of those three, I embrace them. And usually I apply the same concept whenever I get a chance to meet an MSME. I try to, the more I converse with them, the more I work with them, I try to understand also what they're passionate with. No? Uh, because that's very important. Because the moment you're dealing with an entrepreneur and you would like to enable them to do something or to do e-commerce, if it is not something that they, if, if the business that they're in, if they're just doing it for the sake of money, it's not, it's not going to cut. There must be a bigger purpose other than just money. It has to be integrated with who they are, what they're passionate with, you know, and, and their intention as well to serve people. Because if people is not one of your passion or working with people or serving the needs of people is not one of your passion, it will be difficult as well to be effective in, mar in marketing. You know? um, of course, we learned the component of making making working with people as one of your passion in John Maxwell's uh, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. No? Uh, so my purpose is to empower individuals with e-commerce wisdom and skills they can use in sustaining business advocacy and hopefully in the process, combining all of this, help in achieving a uh, better quality of uh, life. So I do this in many ways uh, from the various boot camps that we offer, but our primary target market uh, includes uh, entrepreneurs needing advice, support, including advertisers, individuals wanting to learn about digital marketing, and recently more and more government wanting to empower MSMEs and individuals with uh, e-commerce. So when working with MSMEs, the challenges that we often encounter or what we hear from them that stops them from embracing digital 
of course, apart from the gamut of uh, uh, of running your day-to-day -day business, includes uh, time constraints because usually they're hands-on. They they do a lot of the decision making, a lot of the uh, task performance themselves. They're very hands-on. Therefore, s dividing your time from doing marketing, operations, finance, human resource is a big challenge for MSMEs. So digital is often seen as one of the many things that has to be added, not necessarily a replacement of uh, their marketing duties. No? Uh, budget is also a constraint because there is a perception that um, it will cost a lot of money. They will have to spend a lot for it, especially if they've encountered service providers before that have given them quotations. Knowledge as well, they feel that they don't know enough, therefore making them uncomfortable in embracing it. There is also the issue of skills. Uh, when they feel that they are at the mercy of the person that they're going to work with, who's going to help them, enable them become digital, um, also deters them from getting into it because uh, I think that's the last thing that we all want, no? to be at the mercy of someone and be dependent of everything that they're going to tell you. No? And then there's also the component of trust. Um, finding people that you can trust, where you can share your ideas, share your vision, at the same time without the worry that this person might steal your business, might steal your customers, or the business ideas that you have will be shared, will, they, they will do it on their own or they will share it to another person who might eventually become a, a competitor. And I guess last but not the least also is a, is a concern on sustainability. Can they sustain this? Can they sustain all of these efforts in doing digital marketing? So, so what I would like to share with you at this point, um, so I share the challenges. I'm going to share now the digital marketing plan that I usually uh, teach and what I usually share for people to do when developing a digital marketing plan for their business. Most of the business that I get to deal with are MSMEs. And then later on, I'm going to show you some samples of MSMEs that I got the chance to work with and how they have embraced the concept. Uh, the MSMEs that I'm going to share with you all started with no web presence, no? meaning they have not had any online presence before. They never had a website before. Maybe they've done something on social media and uh, how they use the opportunity to build an online presence and you know uh, build market no build a market for their business and of course if you have questions at any point you can type your questions using the questions box you can also press the raise your hand button at the go to webinar control panel and i can uh, unmute your microphone if you want to speak out and ask your question um Normally, when you do marketing online, you will encounter three threats no? whenever you do um, your marketing campaigns. Primarily, that is the issue of distraction because, uh, you know, your target audience has a lot of things in their mind right now. They are also empowered. They have access to a lot of information that they never had before. If they their attention span has already been reduced no, to nine seconds or eight seconds. So it's not the same as it was before. So meaning the moment you post something out there, the likelihood of a person spending more than five seconds looking at what you have to offer, it has become less and less. And distraction can be in the form of you reading a family update and you be prioritizing that more than what a brand tries to promote to you. And of course, there's competition. And competition can come in the form of a direct competition or an indirect competition. Direct competition can be those that are in your category. And indirect competition are those who are spending more resources than you online, uh, including the updates, the cute puppies, uh, the birthday announcements, the engagement announcements that will go uh, on the same news feed as your promotion does. No, And then... I guess the big issue also is commoditization. When you're just treated as a commodity where you where you are unable to communicate what your unique value is and the person deciding whether they want to get from you based on whether you're affordable enough or not. No? So there's that issue there. So that is why when MSMEs market online, they have a lot of things to think about. No? That includes how can they attract clients if there are other choices in the market, why you are the best choice, 
And then I guess another challenge also is the urgency for an immediate sale, increasing that urgency because most of the time people will 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 not necessarily hurry unless they are at that point where they need to make that purchase. No, um, Earlier, while at the Dipolog Airport, I made a purchase for a back-to-back course that I've been looking at for the past few months. But just this afternoon, I already decided to make that purchase. And I realized that it took me a year to make that decision to make the purchase. So that means that if you are the business, um, the urgency to purchase is something that you cannot just push and make it happen. It requires a lot of consistent communication and then making sure that what you have to offer is relevant enough to the point that by the time the person is ready to make that decision and to make that purchase, your offering will still be remembered and will still be perceived as the best option that should be availed of. No? Now, if you are an alternative, then that also includes uh, convincing your prospects to switch to your product. And if they are past customers, of course, the challenge is can you make them purchase again? Um, there are people that who will never become your customers. No, For example, uh, like the person who invited me for this uh, to do this webinar, no, si Pam. No? I got a chance to meet Pam online when I was running a digital lead generation campaign. And I got uh, I got the chance to have a conversation with her. We never actually uh, did any business in the past, no. But uh, eventually, here I am, no. So, so of course, not not everyone. You will not necessarily have the chance to work with everyone or make them as a customer. But if you are able to build a good relationship, then that person who may not necessarily become your customer can become an endorser or can be a person who can refer you, di ba? Uh, parang ano yan eh, sa fascinate ang tawag namin dyan, yung prestige category. Pwedeng, hindi ka maaf- pwedeng, pwedeng may product kang gusto na hindi mo ma-afford or hindi, you don't have a need for it, but you have a high regard for it. But of course, you might end up re- recommending it or referring it to someone else, no? Who, who you believe might be a right fit for it. So... The challenge for MSME and the challenge that I always give to MSMEs is that granted the fact that you don't have unlimited budget or granted the fact that you have limited budget or sometimes in in a lot of scenarios, you don't have a budget at all or you don't even know what kind of budget are you talking about or what do you mean by budget? Ano ba yan? Kailangan ba ako mag-advertise? Then... If budget is questionable because you still have to get the buy-in to the idea, then it is important that you have to be the most fascinating. You can be boring if you want. If you have a lot of budget, you can afford to be boring because you can just air your ads over and over again. But, and you know, push that for from a brand awareness context. No, But if you are an MSME who have limited resources, and most likely will not have the capacity to advertise or will not even invest in advertising at the onset, then the challenge is for you to become the most fascinating option uh, to people who will see you, no? Or at least get them get their curiosity enough so that they will not be offended that you're targeting them or you're trying to shove your idea or your presence to them because ganon naman talaga, di ba? When we try to market an when we try to market, we target an audience. They, para bang wala naman silang idea na tina-target mo na pala sila tapos all of a sudden nakikita na lang nila yung content mo no so you just have to make sure that you don't look annoying or distasteful that they will become uh, that they will get turned off no with what you're showing to them so when we talk about fascination fascination is an intense focus when you fascinate your listener they're more likely to connect with you and remember you I guess from if your favorite is Seth Godin, then Seth Godin might say, uh, "Be remarkable." And I guess depending on what what you're reading, so others will say that you have to wow them. No, so in my case, I would put it into the context that you have to be able to fascinate your audience. No, um, there are seven languages of uh, fascination, and the reason why I communicate this to MSMEs 
it's because if you are the trainer or you're trying to facilitate someone uh, to develop a unique identity or try to find out what makes them stand out, more often than not, you're just scratching the surface or what they say to you and what you, what you see will be your initial perception as to what makes that product uh, interesting. But in reality, uh, people get fascinated in different ways. No, You have to be cautious that some of them like the idea that you're presenting something new. Some of them would like to see um, how your idea, how you passionately communicate your idea, no? how you try to build connections. Some will also see how confident you are or what makes your, what, how confident is your brand, how you position your products. Some will also see, are you setting the standards high for your product? Some will also see, are you trustworthy enough? No? Um, is that your strongest uh, sweep? Some will also see whether you are revealing everything or you're trying to put an air of mystery so that people would like to know you more. No? Or are you the kind of person who, who runs through the nitty gritty details, you know, trying to explain everything, what's in it for them so that they can make the right choice. So whenever I encounter an MSME, I try to um, ask them first to create a brand fascination profile you can go to brandfascination.com to take this test. So usually all of the MSMEs have to take a brandfascination.com, uh, uh, brandfascination uh, profile test. And then from the brand fascination profile, I will be able to find out what is their brand's fascination advantage. Are they innovation, pa passion, power, prestige, trust, mystique, or alert? So that when they start building their online presence, um, I want to make sure that they will stay true to what makes them fascinating as a brand. You know, the challenge in digital marketing, usually there's a standard advice in digital marketing, like usually, oh, you should blog, you should uh, air an opinion of authority, you should share what you think, you know, you must be, uh, you must share your passion, etc., etc. You know, th there are standard messaging that we encourage in digital marketing. But if that is not, but if that is not what makes you fascinating, I will not push you to do that. So that is the reason why I have to know what makes you fascinating as a brand. You no, know, when you when you take the test, it will it will give that idea. So normally, when you take the test, uh, it will tell you your five adjectives. So, like for example, if your adjective is power, then it will tell it will tell me that. Your power brand is assertive, goal-oriented, decisive, purposeful, opinionated. Now, one thing that I observe for a lot of MSMEs is that they actually don't have write-ups about their products or services. Sometimes, they're, even their About Us write-up is not well-constructed. So by the time they start creating their online presence, usually they resort to copying what's out there and then just modify it or tweak it to suit their purpose. And I don't want my MSMEs to do that. And that's the reason why I try to look for a brand hack that anyone can do that, and that, that they can adopt uh, to themselves. No? So in this case, uh, depending on your fascination uh, brand profile, it will give you adjectives that you can integrate uh, in describing what you do and be able to assert yourself, your your the use of your adjectives will more or less help you in terms of standing standing out, overcoming distraction, and setting you apart from your commoditization, uh, from your competition. And if you're able to tweak and come up with a creative tagline for yourself that is synchronized to what makes your brand fascinating, it will also help resolve uh, challenges in commoditization. Now, usually, uh, for every advantage, there are four marketing pillars. Now, the four marketing pillars more or less say that if your brand is power, these are your four marketing pillars. So, for example, in this case, if you're leading the way, then you must make sure that you fast, if, you're, if you're fascinating by power, then when a powerful brand speaks, the world listens. They set the rules for any event. In their presence, others follow. When others stare, they blink last. So meaning 
the MSME should not be afraid to assert their opinion, to assert what makes them strong, what makes them good, no? uh, what their opinions are, why they're doing things uh, this way. Even if they're an MSME, you know, they're, they feel strongly opinionated on how, how things should be done for the product or service that they are carrying. So they should not be afraid in communicating that. So, for example, um, actually, my brand fascination is power. So whenever I market, whenever I speak uh, and give presentations, I always uh, follow the four. And I think the more you listen to me, you will observe that I'm actually uh, I'm practicing all the four that I'm sharing to you right now. They should show that they, they are taking control. Uh, pursue specific goals and voice uh, opinions of authority. Okay, I believe we have a question here. Uh, Jarvis asks, is it possible for a brand to have two or more adjectives for brand fascination? Um, actually, what happens there, Jarvis, is that you will have a, a primary brand fascination. However, when you do your communication, uh, usually what happens is that you will have to do uh, a brand hack. A brand hack is where you do a combination. So for example, I'm power. But whenever I'm launching a new program, I use power and innovation so that I could show that I'm launching something, but at the same time, I'm launching something that is, for me, a breakthrough innovation, something out of the box. Um, I do power and passion if I want to build relationships, but the way I build relationships is I want to empower others as well. So that's how I build my relationship. So like in this case, uh, uh, Pam and uh, Professor Bong invited me to share my insight with you. So right now I'm doing a power and passion pitch to you because I'm, I'm sharing to you my natural advantage, with this, which is power, but at the same time, I'm trying to communicate with you that this is my passion. I'm rubbing it onto you. you know? And hopefully, if we believe in same ideas, you know, we will be able to build a relationship in that process. You know? A connection can be established from there. You know? um, if I want to set a new standard, then I will use power and prestige. For example, I'm talking about digital marketing plan for MSME. If I am saying that this process is the standard for MSMEs, of course it is not. But if that is what I'm trying to imply, then I have to show that I, then I have to wear a power and prestige positioning. And then um, if I am using trust, power and trust, then I have to show that, you know, I've been doing this for so long. So actually, after this presentation, especially if you will be very observant, what you will notice is I'm, I'm going to use all seven in this presentation with the way I'm going to communicate to you today. No? Um, sige. So, so normally when an MSME, once the MSME discovers what makes their brand fascinating, they have to make sure that they will be able to include the adjectives in their write-up and the way they communicate their brand uh, their products and services, when they do their social media marketing campaign, when they do their email marketing campaign, they must be consistent with their pillars. They they must they must be they must not deviate, no? Because the moment na wala kang sinusundan na framework, pwedeng ano kay, you know, parang you resort to na normal mode, wala kang creativity. And I must admit, I also fall into the same trap in a lot of times when I'm least creative in my communication. But if I'm going to be assertive with my communication, then these are the four that I must always practice. Like if I put out something out there, am I leading the way? Am I taking control? Am I pursuing a specific goal? Am I voicing an opinion of authority? No? Um, so next, after the MSME discovers their brand, the next step is for them to um, clearly communicate their value proposition. Normally in uh, marketing, we have this process called buyer persona creation. And before, I used to create a typical buyer persona uh, a chart where a person fills up the buyer persona, the age bracket, etc., etc., etc. Hobbies, interests, behaviors, etc., etc. However, uh, due to limited time, I realized that uh, that can be a painstaking uh, uh, task, no? So 
what I decided instead is to use a value proposition canvas is, instead because the value proposition canvas is similar to a buyer persona. Um, if you got the chance to, to read the book, Business Model Generation, remember earlier I showed you a sample of a business model canvas, but that is business model you, which is more pattern after an individual. Uh, in the business model canvas, in order for you to identify your customer segment and your value proposition, normally you start with a value proposition canvas like this one. So in this example, I'm showing you my value proposition canvas for the e-commerce bootcamp. So I asked the, my students to almost do the same, you know, something like this. You know. So for example, uh, the, if my customer segment is an MSME, the job of an MSME if I will simplify it into two, two things, the primary intention of an MSME, their primary job is to increase their business revenue and to get new customers and to keep customers. Now, here I have to identify what's their pain. No? What, uh, in, if they want to embrace e-commerce, what's their pain? And if they will embrace e-commerce or doing digital marketing, what would they like to gain out from it? So let's say their gain would be lack of time and no guidance, as I shared earlier, the digital marketing challenges that they may have. So in the value proposition canvas, you should be able to come up with pain relievers. So let's say if, if, the, if it's lack of time, then my pain reliever would be they should be able to take it online or face to face. If their pain is that no one is guiding them, then I could say we have chat and social media support and we have webinars like this. No? Now, if they will study e-commerce and if they can gain something like this, which is they can get it for free, and in the process they will get learn, if they will learn new skills, then they'll be happy. So what I'm saying that, okay, I have free modules. Hopefully that will give you free learning and I have multidiscipline modules, so in the process, you can learn new skills. If you study the value proposition canvas, the idea there is that there must be a product and customer fit. Now, usually when MSMEs try to market their products and services, let's say you resolve the branding challenge, which I showed you earlier. The next challenge is, do they really, know, do they really understand their customer? Um, it amazes me that Sometimes MSMEs just define their customer, but do not exactly know how they are, what pains are they exactly addressing, and what gain are they creating that will add value to their customers. So that is the intention, asking them to do this part of the exercise. No? Um, and usually after doing this part of the exercise, it's also very helpful because usually what comes out here will also serve as an input on what you need to put on your website and what you need to integrate in your marketing plan. And then, of course, the infamous uh, buyer's journey, you know, the customer path to purchase, uh, depending on how we uh, refer to it. So we put a lot of emphasis into this. Uh, earlier, if you notice, uh, in, in my credentials, I am certified in uh, inbound marketing, inbound sales, and content marketing. And, you know, in inbound marketing, we try to, one of the, one, the primary, uh, co the core of it is all about content. No? Um, but developing content must be specific. So content, the content must, must resonate your brand, of course. It must be able to uh, meet the needs of the customer either as a pain reliever or as a, or as a gain provider. And at the same time, presented at the right stages during the buyer's journey, during the awareness stage where the, where the person is still uh, trying to find out or trying to learn more about the problem that they have. And then during the consideration stage, when they start looking for solutions, and then at the decision stage, when they are ready to make a purchase. As I always tell to friends, if somebody buys from you, even you without doing any awareness or consideration activities, guaranteed somebody has done that for you. No? Somebody has done it, but eventually they converted to you. So, so they have to be um, aware of what cost, what, what happens to the customer during each phase of the journey and you know assert their understanding of it no so the moment they are able to clarify this part 
then they can proceed to step four. And the step four is that they have to first create an online presence. Uh, a lot of people spend efforts in digital marketing, often disregarding the need to have an online presence. But I think that's a big mistake. The moment you've sorted out your brand, your value proposition and your target market, and your buyer's journey or the customer journey, the first thing that you have to fix is your website. No? So usually we build a website, we teach the MSME to build a website using platforms like uh, WordPress. The website must have at least 30 pages, 200 to 300 words per page for search for to be favored by search engines or to be seen well by search engines and by readers as well. Uh, content must cover awareness, consideration, decision, stages content. Of course, they do a lot of content writing, photography, if there are products, and integrating important policies, including data privacy, terms and conditions, and uh, refund policy. So these are pre-work before you get into the digital marketing activity per se. You don't jump into the digital marketing plan. You don't take the plunge until you prepare everything that has to be prepared at the back end, and it must start with a website. Because if you start promoting on social media, 90% of the time, they're not ready to do anything the moment they see your promotion. But what you want to make sure is that by the time that they are ready, their instinct is to, ser is to search for you on Google if they don't know your website yet. No? And you want to make sure that they'll be able to find you when that time comes. No? And then uh, while working on your website, another important component is the customer relationship management tool. Uh, for MSMEs, usually I teach them how to use HubSpot, uh, HubSpot CRM, primarily because it's free. So usually uh, we use HubSpot marketing and HubSpot CRM, HubSpot marketing for lead generation. And then uh, we and then we also use HubSpot CRM for follow-through communication and for deal tracking. So we teach the MSME in so far as that is concerned because the last thing that you want is for them to start plunging into digital marketing without any discipline as to how they're going to store the database of people who have inquired. I'm sure you've seen that. I mean, I'm also guilty of that. In the past, I would uh, talk at events, I will have a lot of inquiries, I will have a lot of business cards, I would just add them on LinkedIn and then forget about it, no? unless some of them will start conversing with me. No? Um, I, and today, I find myself having more than 15,000 contacts on LinkedIn, almost the same on Facebook, but actually, um, but in reality, I'm interacting with less than 100 with less than 150 people, no? So, and you don't want your MSME to fall into the same trap. If they're gonna do something online, it is very important that the CRM processes must be established. A process on how you're going to store whoever inquires from you from text, from email, uh, from social media, from your website, from your live chat, mobile, uh, from text messages, store them into the system, have a follow-through communication approach, and um, and uh, have an email marketing to supplement, put deal value, and then track your performance. Like, for example, if you receive uh, 50 inquiries in a month or you end up conversing with 50 people in a month, how many of them eventually converted? Or how many of them are you following up? And then, of course, you want to have a clean database. So those who don't engage or who don't reply, you also know how to break up with them. So it's like saying, let's say you inquired from me and then I sent you something because you inquired and then you did not reply back. I will send you a breakup email saying something like, hi, I sent you something because you inquired. Uh, I want, I, are you still interested? You know, and then if you're not interested or you don't reply to this email, I assume you're not interested. So I'm not going to bother you anymore. You know, something like that. And that means I'm not going to email you anymore. I'd rather be emailing 100 people but are active rather than emailing 1,000 people but only 10% are responding. I hope you're, get, you're getting the picture of what I'm saying. So, so usually it covers uh, a combination of lead-in forms. So a lead-in form can look something like this. 
where let's say somebody is viewing the bootcamp site and then if they're interested they will click this and then they will fill up a form and then if and then of course if that gets filled out that gets submitted in the in the crm system and then uh if they click on the send us a message box here this is a facebook live chat and if they fill that up then that will enter our Facebook page, and then of course, we will also enter them in the CRM. And then you must have follow up email marketing approaches. Although I'm, it's a challenge for me because I usually do this, uh, uh, I don't necessarily aut automate it because I notice some people do not send or do not put actual email addresses. Sometimes they deliberately, uh, how do you call it, make it inaccurate misspelling among among others and you know some somebody can just mess around with your system so you want to make sure that you don't get flagged for that so i'd rather i want to make sure that i get to check the people who fills up the form before i send them anything you know? so they can use uh free platforms like hubspot but i also use uh, a paid platform called nimble because that also has uh, social media components so that means when I add the person, I can also see what are they doing on social media. So it's it's like a stalker tool, something like that. You know? Okay, and then after the creation of the of the website, setting up of the email, the live chat, the email templates, uh, hopefully the content is complete already. So you now go through the process of making the website search engine friendly. So you want to make sure that but of course, you cannot teach everything to the MSME, no? all, all of this stuff. But you just want to focus that, uh, are they using the right keywords? No? Uh, are, they right, are, they, are they using the right keywords covering the awareness, consideration, and decision journey? Now, before, uh, my process was, before you create content, I will teach you SEO first. Before you create content. But now, I do the opposite. You create the content first before you do SEO. And the reason for that is I noticed that if you prioritize your SEO before you do your actual content, it affects the way you do your content. Instead of uh, carrying your, your natural voice as a brand, what makes you unique as an MSME, um, how you understand the need of the customer, that gets lost no? the moment you start focusing on keywords that you see in search engine results. However, if you focus on your unique content as you understood it, as you understand your customer, uh, creating content in your understanding of your value proposition, your buyer's journey, then you just make my you just make uh, minor tweaks when you reach this point. You know? And of course, if you're still lacking content, then it's more of catching up with additional content that can be added on the website and integrate it so that you can make it better, okay? And then, of course, they do the part uh, on uh, blogging and social media marketing. So they get they get taught how to do blogging. Um, normally, we use blogging for the awareness stage in the buyer's journey, so creating awareness stage type of content. And then afterwards, they also do social media marketing. So one of my top performers in the batch one of my e-commerce and digital marketing mentoring program for MSME is Chitang Storta. So this is a screenshot of their social media marketing campaign. So if you notice, it's not all about just marketing the product. There are some that are feel good, you know, trying to communicate the voice of the brand. You are the, you are the cookie to my coffee. Yung mga ganung, <laughs> may mga konting cheesy, cheesy bits ba? Chitang Storta, uh, for those of you who don't know, kahit ako nadali ako niyan eh, akala ko dati yung torta, yung egg na torta, yung pala sa Cebu, ang ibig sabihin nila ng torta, it's mamon. Uh, kaya lang mamon infused with tuba. So, kung nakatikim na kayo ng, what's, what's that term? I think, uh, kinutil sa buhol, yun yung hot choco with, uh, with Sprite. Sprite ba o Royal? Tapos hot siya, tapos may tuba siya. So mainit siya na may tuba, tapos parang may Sprite siya, tapos iinumin mo. Which is a very weird drink, no? I mean, kung nakatingin ka ng Irish coffee, yeah, it's okay. Irish coffee is hot. But yun pala, pero pa palang hot drink na may alcohol, no? So that's kinutil. So I think uh, Chitang Storta will go well with kinutil. So 
the social media marketing campaign must also touch also that component. May awareness, consideration, decision. Hindi pwedeng benta, 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 benta. Kailangan may ano rin, may staging din ng content, no? So, usually, they, um, the, the, the program is capped with a 21-day digital marketing campaign. Uh, usually, 21 is a favorite number because diba, somebody said before that if you want to form a habit, if you want to form a habit, you must do something for 21 days straight to form a habit. So, that's the idea behind the 21-day marketing campaign, to force a habit. No? Uh, however, Robin Sharma said something like, hindi na raw 21 ngayon. I think it's 69 days now for, to form a habit. But anyway, they do a blitz uh, checklist. So the blitz or the 21-day digital marketing blitz is all about creating social media content or digital marketing content coupled, back, so backed up by CRM, live chat, email marketing, website, no? Um, and creating content for awareness, consideration, and decision. At least good for 21 days. And of course, the objective is to uh, is to hit the, ta the target objective that was agreed upon, whether it's sales generation, looking for resellers, generating leads, uh, increasing foot traffic. No, it depends on uh, what's the intention. However, uh, the challenge now, though, with marketing is that you cannot just plug something out there and expect to get results. No? Kaya the, the main anchor here also is all about relationship, no? In relationship marketing. So normally, when they plug, they tag each other. So the entrepreneurs tag each other. The entrepreneurs tag their, uh, their friends. And then that's because most of them don't have uh, advertising budgets. So, kung magpo-post ka lang on your own, the possibility of you getting traction from what you post without putting any money on advertising is very little, especially with the changing rules right now on Facebook as a popular marketing platform. So, to make it work, uh, it's really all about relationship connections, friends, your network your support network. And and for that support network to be supportive of you, then kailangan meaningful yung content mo para magkaroon siya ng ripple effect na tinatawag. No? Apart from building the relationship ahead of time, saying that you're studying in this program and to grow in this program, you need to do campaigns, you will do your best to publish relevant content and asking for their permission to be tagged. And if they like it, they, you hope that they will share it. But if they don't like it, the, they will very much appreciate the feedback that can be given to them. No? So, ganun yung strategy. And, and, you know, at first, I was even scared whether it's gonna work. But unfortunate, but fortunately, it worked. No? <laughs> work naman siya. So, I'm gonna share the story to that, on that. No? So, so let me now proceed on the digital marketing plan for the MSME uh, case studies that I'm that I have, no. And uh, I hope that you will uh, enjoy this part. So working with MSMEs, uh, I started doing this last year um, after the release of the e-commerce roadmap of the Department of Trade and Industry. So we started first with an MSME e-commerce activation program. These are one day educational programs teaching people how to do e-commerce and digital marketing. So this happened in uh, 16 locations all over the Philippines. However, we realized that uh, teaching people how to do e-commerce and digital marketing cannot happen in a day. Uh, it cannot happen in two days. It has to be mentoring in approach. Uh, I don't want to call coaching, no? You know, sometimes people confuse coaching with mentoring, but actually they are two different words, you know? Mentoring, you're teaching people, you're showing examples. Maybe like me teaching right now, yeah, you can call this teaching, but if you're my student, I'm working with you, I'm showing you examples, I'm showing you how it's gonna be done, then you can say that's mentoring. But coaching is different because coaching is more of asking you what you're doing, you know, and uh, pro 
asking follow-up questions so that you can think further. But in coaching, the answer is within the individual. It's it's totally different with mentoring altogether. So I hope you don't confuse uh, the two. No. So so far, I've handled two batches. One last year. And then uh, I did another one uh, this year, last summer. And then my third batch will happen this coming September. And I think I'm also going to have a batch in uh, Bohol. So the first batch are purely Cebu MSMEs. The second batch are from Region 7, uh, having entrepreneurs from Dumaguete, Siquijor, uh, Bohol, and then Cebu. Third batch, I think it will be the same. And then the one in Bohol will be more for uh, Bohol MSMEs. So, and currently, I also have a program with the Department of ICT working with uh, where the program is also being implemented in 27 cities. But this time, instead of me going there to teach it myself, I'm working with uh, 10 trainers. Majority of the trainers were formerly my students. Either they are certified e-commerce professionals or certified blog and social media entrepreneurs. Now, if you notice the training modules here, uh comprise what i shared to you earlier i think if there's only difference would be the last part which is the building of a freelancer profile so this is ongoing right now so far i think we have uh nine or ten locations uh ongoing at the moment but we hope to complete the 27 locations this year but in this part we're training freelancers and for every freelancer we're pairing an msme that they can work with Unlike in this part, where all of the trainers are the MSMEs and uh, and all of them are sole proprietors. No? Okay, so a typical program would look something like this. So, so just to show to you that um, lahat ng mga sinabi ko kanina, hindi siya parang kinuwento ko lang sa inyo. Talagang yan yung, yan yung protocol. Kung baga, kung may protocol, yan yung protocol na pinafollow, no, na sinusunod dun sa program. So, they do fascinate on the first day, value proposition, and then they do the buyer's journey. And then on the second day, they start working on their website until the end of the program. They do the CRM and uh, do the policies for their website. They learn payments and work on their email marketing. They do their SEO and social media presence creation blogging, and then activation of the 21 digital marketing campaign. And then they run the campaign, and then they return after three weeks to report their accomplishments. And then from there, I will decide who will get a certificate of participation, and then who will get a certificate of completion, and who will be the medalist, yung mga talagang uh, performers. No? So the first batch in Cebu, we had two batches. The first batches in Cebu had a combined sales of 300,000 pesos for their 21-day campaign. The second batch had a combined sales of uh, of uh, three of uh, three mil yeah three million. Ang combined sales no uh, second batch. Uh, due to limited time that we have, I'm not. I will not be able to show you all the websites. However, what I'm going to highlight instead will be more of the graduates for batch two. So, for example, like this one, all of the websites were only created during the program. None of them were existing before, beforehand. If any, I think only a, one or two were existing beforehand, but they were not necessarily uh, marketing. No? So, one of my favorites is Subida Souvenirs from Dumaguete. Uh, they... The owner has a souvenir shop in Dumaguete, which also functions as a tourist center. So he created a website to market uh, local souvenirs, local toys. Um, actually, dyan kayo makakabili ng gayuma. Kung para sa mga matitindi ang pangangailangan, makakakita kayo ng gayuma dyan. <laughs> no? Galing na Siquijor. Diba? Siquijor is, is known for being a mythical island. No? So na one, parang may season lang sila na nag-harvest ng mga ingredients to prepare gayuma. So, meron dyan, no? Um, and then, uh, maganda sa kanya, may social responsibility component siya kasi he works with local craftsmen. So, he has his nature backpacks, no? At kung ano-ano pa. Isa siya sa mga pinaka-creative sa paggawa ng digital marketing campaigns is kasi gumawa pa siya ng mga videos. 
uh, among others, featuring the local craftsmen, pati yung pagpo-promote niya ng mga products niya, ginagawa pa niya ng mga simple videos on how to use, pero very fun to watch. At uh, kaya naging shareable yung kanyang content. And I think being an MSME and being active with fellow MSMEs, I noticed that MSMEs in the provinces tend to help each other a lot. May bayanihan spirit yung mga MSMEs sa provinces, especially if they're part of a government program. Nagtutulungan sila eh, kasi sila rin yung nagpa-participate sa mga trade show, trade events, sinasama sila ng government, sa mga trade fairs. So parang nagkakaroon sila ng bonding as fellow entrepreneurs. And I think yun yung isang importanteng uh, bagay na nag nagpatulog sa kanila in making this campaign work for them. Yung them, normally, if you're an entrepreneur, when you're promoting, mahihiya ka magtag. O kaya ikaw may magtag sa'yo, hindi mo naman tutulungan yun kasi bakit mo tutulungan? Pero if you're part of a community, friends mo tong mga kapwa entrepreneur mo, okay lang tag kita. Sige, share ko yan. Kasi alam ko naman, you'll do the same for me. So, napaka-importante nung component na yon. I think that that made them all successful. no? And ito, dahil he's working with a lot of the craftsmen, even the craftsmen, the customers are sharing the products that he is promoting on social media. Shawi Arts and Crafts is actually known in Dumaguete for... Um, working on murals. Actually, mural painter siya. Siya yung nagde-design ng mga murals, tapos siya yung gumagawa mismo ng murals. Maraming murals sa Dumaguete na si Shawi ang gumawa. But at the same time, yun, in-express niya rin yung art and creativity niya through the products. Actually, yung mga bags niya, mga Louis Vuitton inspired. Bumili ako ng isa. Akala ko sales talk lang yun. And then, nag ako recently sa Myanmar. Dala ko yung bag na ginawa niya. And, uh, yung isang speaker na taga Singapore nung pauwi na kami nakita niya yung bag ko sabi niya nice bag sabi ko yeah it was made by one of my students eh di ba usually sa province parang banig yan eh tapos sa kanya talagang pinaganda niya lang no tapos eh sabi it looks like Louis Vuitton so naniwala na ako <laughs> so anyway sa kanya naman she also likes working with the local craft folk at saka yung mga young people, lalo na doon sa mga tumutulong sa kanya sa paggawa ng murals. Kaya sila rin yung mga naging model niya at ganun din nung nagkikreate siya ng content, sila rin very supportive sa kanya. Kasi nga, nakapag-build din siya ng relationship sa community. I think the nice thing about uh, entrepreneurs, sole proprietors, the mere fact that they're running their own business, they are all leaders. So each of them having their own followers as well, people that they lead, people that respect them, and they have people that they care for. So in the process, when they start embracing social media and present what they do, and and you know start sharing what they're good at, you you naturally see the support system that they have. You no, know? the people that they work with who believe in them, uh, the people they serve, the people who support them. Para it comes all together, and it's really for me, it's a joy to see that in action. I'm at I'm at awe. Kasi, syempre, pag uma-attend sila sa klasiko, parang tingin ko lang sa kanila, estudyante ko sila. Pero pag nagmamarketing na sila, pag nakikita ko kung gano'ng kasupportive yung mga tao sa kanila, yung sinishare yung mga content nila. Parang, wow, talagang, it's a different feeling altogether. Um, I'm so amazed how they how they do it. Uh, one of my favorites also is uh, South Cebu Tours. So, actually, South Cebu Tours is owned by Happy Wanderer. Kaya lang kasi, Happy Wanderer, has its own website and usually the target market of Happy Wanderer are um, foreigners who are already in Cebu and you know just wanting to avail of a trip but so they created uh, South Cebu Tours and South Cebu Tours focuses on the market where the foreigners are not yet in the Philippines but are planning their trip to come to the Philippines and um, I must admit na ang galing nilang kasi doon lang nila ginawa yung website eh because of their passion in what they do, they're known for Project Suru Suroy and promoting South of Cebu, like Oslo, well watching, canyoneering in Cebu. You know, I've been in Cebu for so for so many times already since uh, 1995. Although I had, nakapag-tour din naman ako kahit pa paano. 
Pero yung mga pinakita nila dyan, parang hindi ko akalain, wow, you can do that in Cebu, no? Para to the point, sabi ko, I have to make sure I'll be able to do that this year. Nasa bucket list ko na siya this year, no? So, maganda yung naging performance nila. I think they're one of the best performers that we have for the for the campaign. Uh, we also encountered a husband and wife team uh, doing business card printing, ID, ID printing, among others, and they usually outsource this. And they have clients from all over the Philippines uh, ordering from them uh, for their requirements. Uh, this one is from Bohol. Actually, nung pumasok to, parang medyo reluctant ako, no? Raffia, which is parang uh, uh, a, a raw, uh, an ingredient or uh, a, what do you call that? A fiber that you use no? to be able to create those placemats, bags, uh, yung mga yung mga ginagamit, parang sash, yung nialagay sa mga speakers, mga VIPs. But uh, surprisingly, nung nagpo-promote na sila, B2B ang kanya naging nature of transaction. So may nakakita ng mga ginawa niya, tapos may nag-inquire kung kaya niya bang mag-implement ng isang specific design. So nakakuha siya ng job order. Siguro nakakuha siya ng job or mga two to three job orders during the duration of the campaign because of their campaign. And the owner of uh, Tubigon Rafia is actually working with cooperatives na yun yung gumagawa ng mga, mga requirements nila. No? Uh, this one, uh, Emirich Bangus Fry. At first, I was also reluctant with this MSME. Kasi taga, ano to eh, Moal Boal in Cebu. And you know, Moal Boal is far away ah, from Cebu. So, sabi ko, ano negosyo mo? Uh, yeah, bana may shrimp crabs, bangus, and but then bangus fingerlings. And then, how are you going to do digital marketing? Paano yun? Can you deliver? Sabi niya, ah, no, ma'am, they will come to us. Sabi ko talaga, they will come to you. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. If they if they really need it, they will come to us. So, sige naman, okay naman ako. So, when they started doing their marketing, uh, and then, nung nag-report na siya, you know, ang report, hindi ito pwedeng report lang. Kailangan may proof ka. You have to show screenshots. You have to show talagang proof na nagkaroon ka ng inquiry, nagkaroon ka ng order, may mga receipts ka, papakita mo talaga kung saan galing yung sales mo para talagang authenticated yung mga mga claims na in terms of output. So, nagkaroon siya ng mga, I think, four buyers ng fingerlings no? uh, during the duration of the marketing campaign. Uh, ito, nagbago na website niya, si Organize Maharlika. Ito ang binibenta niya, mga crystals, um, and then organite. You know, I never knew what organites were. I, but I'm, I'm, I'm aware of crystals, no? But not organite. So nag-research pa ako dyan. Apparently, there's this thing called organic energy. Kaya may coil siya. So parang normally, you keep that parang to center in, to gather energy, no? So, so yun ang concept niya, no? So, so far, ito, interesting case study rin siya. Uh, this one is from uh, Bohol also, Chrysander. So, they do mga wooden jewelry and then mga wooden souvenirs. Yung wooden jewelry hindi nag-click during the digital marketing campaign, but what clicked instead was the wooden souvenirs, uh, pang weddings. And then, we also had another MSME which uh, focuses on selling sweets and pastries from Bohol and was also to able generate sales because of their marketing campaign uh, during that period and drive uh, foot traffic. Ah, yung organized Maharlika ka na pala, ito na pala itsura ng site niya ngayon. So, cool naman siya. Tsaka, ginawa na niyang international. Meron na siyang dollar, tapos meron na rin siyang peso. Uh, Boton, they do uh, custom jewelry. So, yun ang tinay niyang i-market dito, tapos nagpa-participate siya sa mga trade fairs. So, through promotion ng online, yun na nag-drive ng traffic sa kanya. Kaya during trade fairs, isa siya sa mga nauuna na uubos kagad yung inventory na binibenta niya. Okay? So, those are samples of uh, digital marketing campaigns. So, I guess, ang gusto ko lang i-communicate as I end this presentation. At the end, you know, digital marketing, when you really look at it, um, when you really look at what others, what, what we will see in guides and everything, they almost say the same thing. 
they will always they will always tell you to do the same procedure. May website ka, mag SEO ka, gawa ka ng social media presence, magkaroon ka ng content marketing, magkaroon ka ng blog, no? Almost everybody will tell you the same thing. Any plan, any plan template will always tell you to do the same thing. Pero at the end of the day, I think what will make a digital marketing campaign successful is all about the preparation. Napakalaking bagay yung preparation. Clarification of the brand, the brand voice, clear value proposition na gusto mong i-communicate, uh, clear understanding of the buyer's journey and using that as a guide in creating and designing your campaign, um, and, and creating your support system. Yung sino yung network mo na magiging supportive sa'yo when you do your campaign. Because if you do it alone, unless you have a lot of money, if you have a lot of money, you can do it alone. Pero kung ano ka lang, MSME ka, solo ka, baka panghinaan ka ng loob if you do it alone. Because your reach, doing it alone will be minimal. But if you're part of a community, you're part of a support system. Uh, and and having like-minded people who who like to help each other then there's a bigger possibility that you coming together and joining hands will make you more will increase the chances of becoming successful in carrying out your campaigns okay so i hope my sharing to you uh this evening is helpful so if there are any questions i'm open now to questions thank you